Hey, Edith. Hey, Christy. Why do leprechauns love to garden? I don't know. They have green thumbs. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> How could you tell if a leprechaun likes that joke? I don't know. He's doubling over with laughter. Dublin? Dublin, Ireland? There you oh, go. Nice. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Christy. And I'm Edith. We're backyard gardeners in Colorado. And neighbors. And friends. These days, gardening is becoming very popular. We're not experts. We just learned a lot about gardening from the mistakes we made along the way. So welcome to Upside Down Tulips, a fun podcast that celebrates gardening gone wrong. Upside Down Tulips. Hey, Christy. Hi. Hi, Edith. How about that music? How about that, Denise? For folks who skipped over our intro music this week, you missed it, and you should rewind and go back. Absolutely. And then you should re-listen to the Christmas episode if just to hear what she did with the same music, but changed it totally for Christmas. Yeah, she made us brand new music this week in celebration of St. Patrick's Day. Uh Uh-huh. To all our Irish listeners out there. Hi, Irish listeners. Glad to have you aboard. So today we're recording, it's the 11th, you know what tomorrow is. Episode, thir- what, hmm? the 12th? It's the 12th, yes. <laughs> what else? <laughs> it's also plant a flower day. I did not know that. Is it still celery month? It is still celery I month. I can't get over that. I mean, international women's get one day and celery has an entire month? Exactly. That does not seem right. Does uh, it? Well, we can't plant a flower tomorrow. No, because we're expecting, we don't know how much, but they're measuring it in feet of snow. Yeah. Look how happy we are. We're both smiling. I'm okay with it because, you know, if it's going to get, if, it, if it's going to snow, it might as well just dump on us. So that the, the city will shut down. And I was all happy about that. And then I thought, wait a minute, it's been shut down a lot this past year. <laughs> right. <laughs> I am such a hermit. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and you made it to the grocery store before all the feet of snow come? I did. I went yesterday. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Was it crazy? No, not too bad. I think I went to kind of a skanky one, so, you know, maybe not that many people go to it, but I do. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) You know, is that how they advertise it? Yes, yes. Yeah, I see. You know, they come and change that. Super skanky deals at the Skankmeister. Huh, I might want to revisit that marketing plan if I was them. Okay, I think you should. Uh, well, at the last time we had this big a snow in March was 2003, mm-hmm. and what was nice about it is that we got three feet of snow, Yeah, everything shut down, and it turned the tide on a terrible drought we were having. And we're hoping that happens this year. In 2003, I made a big easy chair out of snow in my front lawn, and I say front, I don't have a lawn, folks, yard, and I sat in it. Oh, cool. Oh, it's so cool. Well, what are we going to talk about this week, Edith? Spring cleanup. Good. It's good timing because as soon as um, the snow melts, we'll want to get out there and clean stuff up. Yeah. And I think you have started cleaning stuff up already. A little bit. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. I was just trying to get things opened up around the iris and around the tulips. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Because you know what, folks? If you do it all at one time, you're just going to get exhausted. You do a little bit every day, it's much better, right? Yeah. Yeah. I should also tell you, Edith, that we got another five-star review on Apple Tunes. So when they when they do that, do they talk? Do they write things down as well? Not necessarily. You can just go to your phone and just click the five and be done oh, with it. But this okay. person did make a little comment. What what they say? Said that they listened to the first episode uh-huh. and thought it was funny and informative. Oh, way back to the first episode? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Episode number one. Which means that maybe they're going to listen to more. That'd be cool. Mm-hmm. You know what's also interesting about this person is that they put their name in as Patty Jenkins, which is the same name as the director of Wonder Woman. Oh, that is interesting. You think it's the same person? What if it was? Well, I would be very happy. Patty, if that's you... Yeah, that, let us let know. Us know. Yeah, <laughs> let us know. <laughs> if not, you're still a valuable human being. Don't think otherwise. We want to uh, give a shout out to one of our 
patrons, one of the members of the garden party. Yes, we have a garden party, which means you give us money, basically. So really, we're partying. Just... <laughs> 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 and you're supporting it. <laughs> I think what it is is that we're toiling away we producing are toiling. a podcast. And people are want to give us a nice, Christy, they want to support us. Christy and your OI words. If it isn't moist, it's toiling or soil. You o. love I. those OI words. Yes, yeah. Toiling. Well, this week we're going to give a shout out to one of our deadheaders. Okay. And this is somebody who donates, who supports... $10 a month, mm -hmm. Diane K. Thank you, Diane. Oh, Diane K. From Denver? Yes. Oh, thank you so much, Diane. We appreciate it. And if you are interested in helping support um, Upside Down Tulip so that we can continue uh, producing this toiling. podcast. Toiling. Toiling away. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go to our website to find out how to become a patron. Or if you're on your phone right now, you can just scroll down and there'll be a link in the show notes. There you go. So easy peasy. Yeah. And if you're a member of the Garden Party, you get... Fun rewards, you like do. getting shout out on the podcast, mm -hmm. or you can get some fun merch, merchandise, like a cup, a mug, a t-shirt. Or, you, we know we collect seeds, Christy and I, and mm -hmm. we'll give you some seeds if that's the category you're in. Yep. Hand handcrafted seeds from our gardens. Can't get them anywhere else. That's right. Yeah. So, Edith. Yes. How's your garden doing? Christy, you're not going to believe what I did. Maybe I jumped the gun, but like you say, if you're not killing something, you're not gardening hard enough. <laughs> I started my moon garden. Oh, already? Yes, I did. You know how it was so in the 60s, yeah. la like the beginning of the week. Yeah. So I thought, what could it hurt? Right? So how did you start it? What did you do? I planted onions. I think you're okay with that. I think I might be. And then I planted... So I found this, like, it's like a coat rack or a hat rack, a real flimsy wire one, mm -hmm. in the alley. So I put it in the ground, you know, <laughs> and I'm going, and I put peas around the bottom of it so that I'm going to make a leaning tower of peas. Oh, that's cute. Isn't that fun? So anyway, I planted peas, and I didn't put them in water, soak them. Oh, that's good. Because that'll hold them back. That. There you go. That's a mistake I've made with peas before. And we'll probably talk about that more when we talk about spring planting uh -huh. in the future. But I have soaked peas and then they've gotten really wet. And if we're going to get three feet of snow, yeah, they and, might yeah. rot. And and I didn't want them to, to come up right away because of the snow that's coming. So I thought I'll delay their germination. Oh, good. So we'll see what happens, we'll see. Christy. You might be planting peas again. I'm well, I and I will gladly plant peas again. Yeah. So that and uh, what's about your garden? Well, I have an update to circle back on the spaghetti squash drama. Did you have any good ones? Well, no. They're okay. all. They all. I had. I had ten spaghetti squash. I put them in the garage, and last week I shared that they all went mushy because it got too cold, and I should have brought them inside. Uh huh. And, and I, she has an attic. Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I could have put them in the attic, which is Could have put them in the attic with the tomatoes that are up there rotting as we speak. <laughs> I'm <laughs> kidding. <laughs> got mushy in the garage. So instead of attic tomatoes, I have spaghetti squash, garage, garage spaghetti squash. Well, I put them all in the compost pile. Uh-huh. And then I went out the next day. And? And, and discovered that they were all chewed up. <gasps> So I think I just made a really lovely meal for our squirrels, or I'm thinking a raccoon. Of course, because because the rind was softer, they mm -hmm. could get in. They were happy. Somebody was really happy. I'm glad you did that, because maybe that'll keep the squirrels in your neighborhood, uh -oh. rather than three or four blocks east where I live. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I did. I was, at a, I was at a Zoom call with some friends, and they were talking about how they had seen crocus come up, which I always love. This is the happiest little mm -hmm. harbinger of spring, and, and I hadn't had any come up, and yeah. so I was sort of like, man, they have crocus. I don't have crocus yet, and I was sort of walking around my yard looking to see if there's any crocus. Like could, sullen like you are? Yeah. Like you have a sullen face? And I was, and I walked to the back, I walked to the front, no Oh, crocus, she's getting madder no and crocus. madder. Pouting, no crocus, pouting. But something happened in the next hour as I walked you're, around again. Okay, you're kidding. I swear to goodness, in the backyard, all of a sudden, boom, there's that flash of yellow. Wow. That, you know, that golden, beautiful, beautiful yellow. cheerful, yeah. There was a crocus coming up. And then you look a little closer and I could say, oh, hyacinths are coming up. Tulips are coming nice. up. So 
Your tulips, in fact, when I walked back here, your tulips are like, what, four inches high? The leaves, yeah. not the flower? Yeah. Nice. And I think the snow will be fine on them because it's going to oh, be yeah. a warm snow, if that makes any sense. Yeah, and without the flower, they won't go bending down because right. the stem's not up. So they'll yeah. be fine. They will not be upside down, tulips. They will not be upside down. They will love it. Mm-hmm. I was, um, was going to report in on my rosemary. Uh-oh. Mine is dead. Is <gasps> yours? No, mine is come alive. On. Oh, come on. Mine is green. What did you do? I um I put when it got really really super cold I yeah. put some frost cloth, <gasps> and then I put um a bucket over it, and then when the cold was over I lifted it back up. Well, mine is dead, and I did none of oh. those things, and that explains why. <laughs> and I'm thinking I should go out tomorrow wow. before the snow starts, and then I'm going to cover it up again. I but wish there I are parts of green. I wish I had done that. Mine is just like a twig, a little dry, rotten little twig. Oh, no. <laughs> now I'm the one that's pouting. Oh, no. My oh, own dear. fault. Yeah. Oh. And I have a, also a report on um, how, you know how we've been talking about things that people find in their gardens? Yeah, yeah. So little treasures, little mysteries that are uncovered in gardens like coins or uh, somebody found a, a wedding ring. Or like, you know, I found, you know, a cat skeleton. You know, I found, you know, there used to be a trolley that ran up to North Denver. I found a token for the trolley. Oh, that's cool. Yes, and that's That's really cool. Well, here is a story from the Dallas Morning News that was in the news this week. It starts, when her family moved to Grapevine, Texas about 10 years ago, Betsy Marsh started daydreaming about having a garden on the side of her house. She always loved to garden and, in fact, had a small garden in their previous home. But the kids were young, and her two oldest had plans to practice soccer and football in the yard. Mm -hmm. So she says, I was outvoted, dream deferred. Oh. Fast forward to March of 2020, and the kids were older and had a different response, and they put in a garden. And she says the garden has become a source of joy to help us through this difficult time. And she also noted that it increased every the time that they spent together as a family through hard work, and they had all these delicious vegetables. Well, Edith, yes. while excavating their yard for the garden, the marshes found pieces of pottery, possibly belonging to a farmhouse that may have stood on the property. Oh, wow. A friend in the neighborhood who once worked as an archaeologist identified the pattern on one ceramic piece as the ironstone tea leaf design popular in the 1880s. Oh my gosh. Wow. Isn't wow. that something? You can just imagine somebody dry, going to Texas from the East Coast and bringing their good, you know, their good, what do you call it? Dishware? Yeah, their good china. Yeah, their yeah. good china, that's the word. Yeah. Isn't it just wonderful? And then she kind of closes off by saying that... Um, you know, this gave me a great chance to spend time guarding outside with my kids, which is one of my favorite things in the world. And normally between our jobs, soccer, dance classes, and homework, we have a lot less time together. The garden gave us a chance to do something meaningful as a family and create a beautiful place that we can all enjoy. And that's before they eat anything from the garden. Exactly. So all of that is nothing but advantages and wonderful things a garden brings. Isn't that great? Yeah. That's great. Thanks for bringing that. That's wonderful. Well, folks, if you ever hear words or terms you're not familiar with or you want a good laugh, you should check out the Upside Down Dictionary on our website or click on the link in our show notes. Or, Edith, they could also clink on the link. <laughs> <laughs> when am I going to live that down? Huh? I love it. Okay, it's so leave in a week. Okay. Also, if they want to see pictures of our gardens, how about inspirations, gardening jokes, fun stuff, visit us on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Uh Uh-oh, we also have blogs and a YouTube channel. And you can sign up for our newsletter for jokes and funny garden signs and really awesome puns. All of this great (laughs) stuff just for you. No, 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 no. Hold fast. No. George? George, where are you? I can't see you. I'm down here, Jean. I've toppled over. Oh, poor George. Is there anything I can do? I doubt it. 
considering you're a gnome like me and can't move. Not gnome, George. It's pronounced gnome. Gordon, gnome. Well, that's just stupid. There's a G. There's an N. What, are we going to just ignore the G? Yes, George, we are. Well, then maybe my name is pronounced Orge, and you're Ean. My, lying face down in the flower bed makes you cranky. It's just like in the animal called a new, G-N-U. The G is silent. Or like the knight in shining armor. The K is silent. Or have you been calling it a knight all this time? I wish you were silent, Jean. <gasps> Harsh words coming from a gnome lying toppled in the flower garden. Or as you put it, from a gnome. Well, why are we talking pronunciation when I'm lying here face down in a dandelion? Well, at least you fell into a soft flower. It could have been so much worse. Can you imagine falling face down into some dog? Not helpful, Jean. Dear George, I'm sorry. It's just that spring is coming. I feel it. It's in my gnome bones, and it makes me happy. It means the constant gardener will be out here, checking to see if the early flowers are up, the grape hyacinth, the crocuses, daffodils and tulips growing all around us like they do every spring. It's right around the corner, George. You're right, dear Jean Gnome. The flowers will come. The gardener will be here. They'll pick me up and put me right. And in the meantime, gardeners, grow things, lots of things, so that your gnomes always have a soft place to land and to lift your spirits after such a long, dark winter. You know, Edith, one of the things I'm excited about this episode about spring cleanup yeah. is that this is something we have never shared with our listeners before. No, we've not. We've never had spring with everybody. Oh, of course. That's right. We started we're in, in July. We're in the now. I keep forgetting about that. <laughs> <laughs> like time has stopped still. That's right. With This is a whole new season that we're talking about now. Very exciting. If you listen to our episode... In the fall, when we talked about fall cleanup, mm -hmm. you know, we advocate to do little or no fall cleanup of your flower beds. And that is because we have a lot of insects that shelter in there. And if you, you know, some people like they want it to look nice or whatever, and they cut everything down, rake everything away. And the next thing you know, you're, you've killed larvae from butterflies and good insects. Ladybugs. Ladybugs. You, you, stuff mm -hmm. that you really want in, in your garden. So if you've done little or no spring cleanup, which is what I haven't done pretty much anything. Well, you have a, you have a lot of flowers. Lot so of you, flowers. you didn't deadhead. All, you le also left Everything some of the seeds on the flowers for food for birds. Exactly. So now I have a big spring garden cleanup to do. Uh -huh. And you folks might too. So we thought we'd first of all talk about like when is a good time to start doing it, Edith? Yes. And you, you're looking at me like you expect me to answer. Is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think here's what I have heard. And mm -hmm. you correct me if I'm wrong. Um, it should be, the soil should be a certain temperature. And usually you can reach that temperature if you're in the 50s for three or four days in a row. Yeah. I think that feels right. Does that feel right yeah. to you? And to be on the super safe side. Five to seven days, mm -hmm. but you should be you should have a couple good days in the fifties, and also a good handful. Remember to you know check your weather because meteorologists they can sometimes look ten days ahead almost. Isn't that amazing what they can do? It's these unbelievable. Days? Yeah, science, science. Who I love science, so I'm, they'll let you know. So it changes if there's a huge frost coming, if there's a big cold front coming in. Oh yeah, that's you might want to hold it off a little bit. Yeah. Just hold off a little. Keep your eye out. Yeah. Also check to see how moist your soil is. See, mm -hmm. I got a, two O got, eyes and one sense. While you toil in the mo moist <laughs> soil. Easy for you to say. Uh-huh. <laughs> if it's really wet, you don't want to be no tromping around out that. Because then you pack it down, mm -hmm. especially if your soil is clay, like ours is out here in, in Colorado. So just check to see how wet it is. Uh-huh. If you can if you can form a ball with it, wait a little bit. Yeah. If you cut things back too early in the spring, you'll disturb all those wonderful insects and larvae. So wait as long as you can for spring cleanup, but 
don't wait too long to start it because it's a lot easier to cut plants back before the old growth gets tangled up yes. in the new growth. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Then Which I've done that. I've made that mm-hmm. mistake a lot trying to get in there and it's it's tough. Yeah. I've noticed that with iris, for example, that's just starting to happen where the old, because I, I mm-hmm. haven't cleaned them out yet, the old leaves, they're, they're so ready to be cut away. Some people, you know, cut those things back in the fall, but then your iris can't feed over the winter. I cut mine in half. Cut them in half so they can still eat. Good, yeah. good. So anyway, yeah. So And then it's not so bad in the spring. And of course, iris, you can just, just pull those away. They come off so easily. Yeah. Those leaves come off really easily. And you know what you can also do is that when you do, we'll talk about perennial mm-hmm. and annual beds, clearing those up. When you do clear those up, if you toss these stems and branches loosely in a compost pile, if there are ladybugs or important beneficial insects on yeah. there, then they can just be happy hanging out in your compost pile. Because it's warm there. Yeah, that's, that's one of the a, other beauties of a compost pile, as opposed to just throwing it all the way yeah. into the garbage and then having the truck take it away. Come and, and take it into the landfill and put it in plastic. That that seems excessive. Mm-hmm. Uh, you should also hold off on mulching for those same reasons, because it takes a while for these important insects to wake up. And if you throw mulch over everything too early on in the spring, mm-hmm. you're just smothering everything. So wait until things really warm up in your neck of the woods. And speaking of neck of the woods, I think almost every single town and city now has um, a Facebook page for gardeners. Mm-hmm. So so we don't know every zone what you should be doing, but if you have if you're a beginner and have absolutely no idea, find your local community that's on Facebook. Oh, that's a great idea too. And ask them; they will you will be amazed how many people answer your questions. Gardeners are really nice people. Well, the first task in cleaning up a perennial and annual bed is to remove and compost any dead annual plants that have remained over the winter. They're not going to come back because they're an annual. So they just live one year's worth and then they're gone. So Christy, do you cut them or you just pull them out? I just pull them out. So that they're, that also kind of aerates the soil That's a true, little, doesn't right, it? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you didn't prune back your perennials last year, which I have not done last fall, they're not looking very pretty. And so um, they, um, and of course, a lot of perennials prefer to be left standing during the winter for extra protection of the root structure of mm-hmm. the plant. And by definition, a perennial will die back to the ground during the winter, but will come back in yep. the spring. So if you l- didn't leave your perennial standing, Um, And once you start to see new growth at the base of the plant, no matter what zone you're in, it's safe to begin removing the winter mulch that's around it and prune back the perennial back to ground level. Now, what if you have just moved to an area and don't know if if it's a perennial or an annual because everything looks so brown? Oh, and, that's an interesting point. You know, then Just I would trim it back, yeah, and see what happens. Trim it back and see what happens. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to trees and shrubs, uh, there are some shrubby plants with woody stems, like lavender, uh-huh. Russian sage, Bloomispirea, that need to be cut back each spring because they only bloom on new branches. Wait a minute. I have a Russian sage. So you're saying, go and you know a lot more about pruning than I do, cut it back now after the snow melts. Um, It's best to wait until the danger of a hard frost has passed. Oh, so wait even longer. So this you wait, I wait until May. In our neck of the woods, zone 5B, that's usually around the end of April, early May. Okay. And most of these woody perennials will let you know when it's time to prune them because they'll start showing signs by opening up little buds on the lower stem part or new growth at the base of the plant. So I would say be careful of trimming back lavender, Russian sage, bloomispirea too early. Okay. Because you could kill a lavender really quick by trimming it back too quick. Okay. Hold off. So when you see my yard, everything's looking really, really nice in the spring, but then you'll see these clumps of gray, terrible-looking lavender Uh plants because I'm just waiting a little bit longer for them. Okay. Okay, Christy, let me tell you about, I have a rose bush that's like, Two feet high. Mm -hmm. And I looked at it the other day, and there's a couple of green branches, 
but mostly it's all brown. It looks dead. And uh, that, that, that's fine right now. So depend, roses depend on your climate. Roses that are grown in warm climates where roses never go dormant, benefit from a good pruning this time of year oh. and removal of the majority of the leaves to shock the rose into thinking it was dormant and needs to wake up and start growing again. But not here in Zone 5B, not here in the Denver metro area because our roses go dormant. Okay. They go to, they go to sleep. Uh, spring care should begin just as the leaf buds begin to plump up. But you have to be careful about doing it too soon in our area. So we're talking like a month or so. We're talking don't do it now. Don't do it now. No, no, no. I'm so glad I asked you. The best time for pruning roses in our area is generally sometime between late April and Mother's Day. After the plant has broken dormancy and after the, the final spring frost. Because pruning stimulates growth. If it's pruned too early... Then tender growth risks being damaged with a spring frost oh. and freezes. So if anybody who's trimmed their roses before this big snow happens, okay. well, their roses are in danger. Hopefully. Hopefully if we do get two feet, it'll protect the roses. That's true, too. Sometimes snow protects because it's true. warmer it to be. be snow covered. Then freezing is Then bad. freezing, yeah. And the same is true for spring blooming trees and shrubs. They set their flower buds in the summer or fall of last year. So pruning them in the spring before they bloomed means you're pruning off all of this year's flowers. So oh, don't trim your lilacs. Right, 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 right. Okay. Also be careful if as you're pruning shrubby plants, shrubs and trees, if you see any cocoons or chrysalis mm-hmm. on them, mm-hmm. uh, leave that little branch alone and let it stay intact. So what does that look like? Tell us what that looks like, to a chrysalis. I don't know. What do you think it looks like? I think it looks like, I really <laughs> don't tell, know. You but, tell me what it looks right. like. <laughs> I would think it looked like, you know, when um, when a spider gets, a, gets an insect and puts all the web around it? Mm-hmm. Is that what it looks like? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get back to you, folks. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it can look a little webby. Uh huh. You know, it could also look like it's like a like a bulbous leaf. A bulbous leaf. Okay, I know bulbous leaves. Okay, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> oh yeah, that was a, that was my favorite band in the nineteen eighties. Uh, what was their best hit? <laughs> <laughs> um, toiling in the moist soil of there your you heart. Go. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> Hi, I'm the old woman who used to live in a shoe. Remember me? I still don't have a name, but at least me and all the kids are out of the shoe. Cause I married Jack Spratt, who can eat no fat, and he has a house. Anyone notice something strange? Listen, it's quiet. The first time this happened, I thought I'd gone sudden deaf. Or that the kids had formed themselves into a political action committee and run away. But no. Here's what happened. At the request of Mr. Spratt, I started growing a garden. And with the help of upside-down tulips, I kept it alive. Then the kids started eating stuff out of the garden. Vegetables, fruits, like they were someone else's kids. Turned up their noses at ding-dongs and little debbies and devil dogs. Watch this. Kids, how about licorice and jujubes for dinner? No! I want rutabagas. See? So weird. Oh, well, more ho-hos for me. And after a while, the kids stopped running around the house, screaming like banshees at this man on the furniture. I says to Mr. Spratt, Hey, do carrots have sedatives in them or something? No, he says. Vegetables are nutrient dense, <laughs> whatever that means, and they have natural sugars. Sugar, I understand. Sugar, I love. 
Maybe they're in cigarettes, too. Uh, you know, I think I might be addicted. Yesterday, I ran out of matches and found myself trying to light my cigarette in my daughter's easy-bake oven. Do you know how hard you have to suck? It's a two-watt bulb. Anyway, we have a garden and life is good. So grow something. Not that hard. And it'll calm down your kids. We're going to get back to you now on what a chrysalis looks like because we really care. We did a lot of work during that break. Uh-huh, we did. So, Edith, what What does a chrysalis look like? You you said a it was... Bulbous a bulbous leaf. It does look like a bulbous <laughs> leaf. It looks like, like a string of ornaments hanging off of a branch. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of looks like someone hung their bulbous leaves out to dry, you know? <laughs> Yeah, if, you, you know, know what? You'll you know it when wanna, you see it. You don't want to put your bulbous leaf through the dryer. No, and f- it's it. It'll, you'll just wreck it. It won't. You want to. You want to air dry it. Yes. So, folks, you'll know it when you see it. We looked it up and was like, "Oh yeah, of course, that's what it looks like." Okay. All right. So, Edith, what? What about your veggie garden? Spring cleanup. Okay. Can I first tell you something before that I forgot to say? Three <laughs> of my. Vero Flay spinach, that spinach that I was so excited about, uh huh, overwintered. So did my spinach. They're coming. So so they're coming around. Yeah, I'm my so spinach. Oh, I forgot to I forgot to mention that too. That my spinach overwintered. Yeah, well, I so, might go out there and harvest a little bit of it tomorrow. Really, I'm I'm going to wait because it's just it's not much. I'm just going to let it let it be. I did a pretty good cleanup of the vegetables. Um. I did one of the best cleanups I've ever had of the vegetable garden. I'm so glad that I did. But it is a good thing to do in the spring is to test your soil. That's right. And we actually have ways that you can, the pantry tests in one of our episodes, the soil episode. Yes. Look for our soil episode. Yes. And there's (laughs) tests on how you can, for free, just test your own soil. Uh Uh-huh. It's also a good time to, therefore, amend it if you need to, if you want to put any compost in your veggie garden or some manure. That's a real, the spring is a great time for that. And in fact, after the snow melts, I'm going to dig a couple holes and throw the bokashi in. Oh, I was going to ask you how your bokashi Mm -hmm. experiment is doing. You know, it's still, it's interesting. It's one bucket in another bucket and it keeps squeezing the liquid out. It is so interesting. And then I put the liquid in like one of those kitty litter things, the Uh big, and then I threw some horse manure in there that was laying around the garden. Then I put water on it. I cannot tell you how bad it smells. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds kind of gross, Edith. It's going to be like a super fertilizer though. Okay. And don't confuse it with anything else you have in your pantry. Oh, no, I won't. It's because it's outside. (laughs) Oh, okay. (laughs) But I'm going to dilute it even more. And that is going to be how I... Now, I'm not going to do that after I plant. I'm going to do that before. Weeks before Mm -hmm. I plant so I don't burn any of the little seedlings. Oh, gotcha. Do you ever warm up your soil at all? Um, Sometimes, you know, like laying something on it. Yeah. Like some people will lay um, plastic or... Uh, you know, there's a thing called horticultural fleece. Mm-hmm. Okay. Some I did not put that know down. that. Some people put bubble wrap down. Oh, well, that's interesting. Well, Christy, I've never done it. You know, I'm usually too busy. But now that we're all sitting here still unemployed, hello. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's I great that it things are opening back up again. Mm-hmm. But so maybe we can do some soil warming. Yeah, I think I think I might. That's good. I'm hoping that I can get a chance to maybe put in some raised beds. I think I'm going to do that. Are you really? Yeah, I'm thinking so. Are you going to build them? Are you going to build them up with wood or? I think wood, yeah. Um, if I were going to do that, I would love to try the keyhole. Remember on how we yes. garden? Yes. We talked about the coolest thing I've ever read about, which is you. the garden is shaped like a keyhole and it's raised and you walk in the middle of it and turn around and you're surrounded by vegetables. And you don't have to get on your hands and knees. And you don't have to get on your hands and knees. Yeah. An African way of gardening, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Well, a a couple other things you can do for spring cleanup. Okay. Is that the spring is the best time to divide or transplant plants. Spring. Oh. Oh, the ones that are already in there, not necessarily vegetables. Correct. Okay. So 
if you, it's amazing how quickly plants can recover if you catch them early and the weather is mild and they are set to go. And so, by, by mild, Christy means not hot. Yeah. Transplanting in the heat is just, it's a 50-50 proposition mm -hmm. that they'll live. But now, they love it now. I have some plants that I've been trying to transplant for years, but I don't get around to it until May and they're gentle little plants. This is like yeah. a, a wild blue geranium. It's such a gentle Ooh. little plant. It needs to be divided. Lamb's ears, another one too. They start coming up so early and I'm hoping that this is the year I divide my blue geranium and my lamb's ear. Is it too late to divide iris? Um, You know what? You could. Uh, I've done it before this time of year. The best time to divide iris is July. Wow. You might, because you might lose the bloom. You know, so if you if you oh, if you wanted okay, to, because okay. iris will they, they bloom in in our you know depending upon which zone you're in, they'll yeah. bloom between you know April to May. And listen, folks, we just said don't do anything when it's hot. But iris, people put iris in a bag and they put it out on the sidewalk and put a free sign on it. It's like you can't really kill an iris. They're, They're so the, hardy, so hardy, and it's such a beautiful flower. And if you depending on the kind you get, the smells. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's also a great time of year to cut back your ornamental grasses. I don't know anything about ornamental grass. I'm going to be quiet for a while. <laughs> <laughs> it's because, folks, Edith does not have any ornamental grasses in her yard because she does not care for them. Uh-uh, I don't. I like things that I can, that are either flower or that I can eat. Well, technically, an ornamental grass does have a flower. Okay, I didn't mean technically. I didn't mean I have to do a private investigation <laughs> yeah. to find the flower, but sure. Yeah, they have all those beautiful fronds that they make. Fronds well, are not flowers. I leave my ornamental grasses up during the winter for winter interest because I think they're pretty. Winter and they, interest, I love that. And they also provide a great sanctuary for uh, bugs. Mice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're just off it, aren't you? <laughs> well, uh, you know, now's a great time to cut those back. And you can cut those back to a couple inches. You're kidding. All the way down to a couple inches? Yeah. They'll come back okay. when they're ready. And the trick I like to use, especially if you have any big ornamental grasses, uh -huh. is I like to take a bungee cord and then wrap it around really tight yeah. so you can get the whole ornamental grass in there. Yeah. And then I take a hoary knife, which is, if you remember this from our tools episode, yes. it's my favorite tool. Before I had my hoary knife, this is kind of sacrilege, I used to take a bread knife. Oh, wow. And just saw at it. And, of course, the, um, the grasses are great to put in the compost pile because birds make nests out of it. Mm. Oh, that is so cool. So it's a, lot of, a lot of good reasons to have ornamental grasses. That's also how I cut They're my hair. That's how you cut your hair with a mm -hmm. bungee cord and a, and a, and yes. a bread knife? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh. Okay. Okay. Um, and then if you, if this is for all our friends who are container gardeners out there, very good thing to do in the spring is to scrub out those pots and you can just do it with baking soda, water, and a stiff brush. Uh-huh. And if you've had any um, mold or any moss or any fungus in your pots before, you can also do a really light bleach solution like 10 to 1, but okay. make sure you rinse it out really well. But so what you're saying is take the soil that's in the container, mm -hmm. and put, and don't use it again. That's what you're you know, saying? There's different schools of thought on it because it costs money. It does It does cost money. Because, we, because as we discussed before mm -hmm. in our soil episode, that potting soil is different than just the soil from your garden, just different yes. than topsoil. And you have to you buy it, and it costs money. And so some people say, go ahead and reuse that stuff. And then the other school of thought is, well, but it, you, the plants will use all the nutrients in it. But then so you can fertilize it. See, but then you can fertilize it. You I, could fertilize I would it. use it for a long time. I went to I the, too. I was at a store and I saw sphagnum moss, uh -huh. peat moss. That stuff used to be what? That used to be three, four bucks. It was $13. Oh, my goodness. It's so expensive yeah. now. Yeah. And when you do get rid of it, just put it in the compost pile. Yeah. When you decide it's, to get, it's time to get new. And it will it will renew itself. That yeah. Mm -hmm. It's also a great time to weed. I saw weeds in my garden. I oh, did. Oh, yeah, me too. Oh, little, and this is the time to get them out when they're little 
and when the soil yeah. is moist. I've got that weeder that you gave me. I'm really excited to oh, try it this year to really get oh, in there and pop those. That's a great weeder. Yeah, weeding is so enjoyable. It is. When the, when the, cause in the spring, because the ground is really... Um, well, it's, it's vi- uh, what do you call it? Frizzable. Is that what you call yeah. it? Yeah. Frizz- it? it is frizzable. It's frizz. I can't believe I used that word correctly. I have no idea. I was just trying to be nice. Oh, so. you're. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll look it up, Minnesota nice. <laughs> um, but it is a great time. And the weeds are smaller and they yes. want to pop out. So it's, you, can get, you can get the upper hand on those little puppies. If you, uh, yeah, because that's one cleanup you will so regret if you leave it until the heat of the summer. And the weeds yeah. are 20 feet high. They'll come back to haunt you. 100 degrees yeah. out. Yeah. And try yeah. not to compost the weeds also. Yeah. In fact, mm-hmm. speaking of compost, it's a great time to turn your compost pile in the spring. Mm-hmm. Are yeah. you, you, you going to do that? Yeah. Oh, I am. Good. That's usually when I do it is the spring. But this year I did it in the fall too. Good. So I'm going to, it's a great time to do it because all that clean, it can go into your compost pile. Christy, can I, can I do something, talk about, now I put my weeds before they go to seed. I do put them in the compost pile. When they're little, teeny, tiny, yeah. they're just green. You've got to be careful. Right? Yeah, yeah, just be careful. Once they form those buds, yeah. do not put them don't in put the them compost. In. in fact, don't put anything in the compost pile also that has um, had, shows any signs of disease. Mm-hmm. So as you're going through cleanup and you think something looks rotten, something looks like a sign of disease, yeah. that can go straight in the garbage. Yep, yep, yep. Because you don't want that to infect your whole compost pile and then spread throughout your whole yard. Yeah, like 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 what a pandemic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've had enough. You have of that. to put the mask on the weeds and on the diseased plants. Yeah, and then the ones that don't want to mask up will start fighting and screaming, and you'll never get a good night's <laughs> sleep again. Christy, do you know what time it is? No, what time is it, Edith? Mailbag time. Ring, ring. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Hey, we got two letters about winter sewing, which oh, we good. did a whole episode about, and it's not too late. Let me read the letter. The first is from Lindsay from Denver. Hi, Christy and Edith. They always put her name first. That's okay. <laughs> it's alphabetical, Edith. Uh-huh. I listened <laughs> to your episode on winter sewing and decided to give it a go on my little old balcony, waiting with bated breath to see what happens. But is the warm weather weather we're having now going to confuse the seeds into growing before it's the right time? We know there are more freezes ahead. I planted garlic pansies and four o'clocks in milk jugs, possibly too early, but I couldn't wait to get started. I'm waiting a few weeks before I try radishes. Should I be doing anything special to protect the seeds from the sweeping temperature changes? Thanks and thanks and happy gardening. Lindsay. Oh, that's nice. Well, yeah, talk about sweeping temperature changes, huh? Yeah, talk about sweeping. She was worried about all the warm temps, and now we're going to get two feet of snow. Mm -hmm. Well, Lindsay, here's the crazy thing about winter sowing, which is, for folks who don't know, this is a method of outdoor seed starting in milk jugs. Just leave them be. The plants will know what to do. When it gets really warm out and they haven't sprouted, check to see if they need water. Mm -hmm. That's important. Mm -hmm. If it looks like dry cake mix or dry brownie mix, or you don't see any condensation inside the container, Mm. then give them a little water. If it looks like wet cake mix or wet brownie batter, or you see condensation inside the jug, Mm -hmm. then it's okay. Now, I watered mine just last week because I noticed it all looked really dry. Um, Now, if they start sprouting and it gets in the 30s, then you need to cover them with a blanket or bring them inside until it warms up a little bit. Last year, I lost a good five milk jugs because we got a co- my my milk jugs had sprouted. Oh, and we got a cold snap, and I thought they're going to be just fine. And then I went out and meh, meh. oh, Christy, that's good advice. And I'll tell this also to Lindsay's. I planted pansy, so I think you're doing fine. Um, radishes, I recommend you just direct. So yeah, I was gonna say it, they're so hard to transplant. It's not worth right, it. Right, and if you're and if you're doing container gardening, uh-huh. Lindsay, just go ahead and put them in a planter. Like make sure just as deep enough for the radish. But yep. you, then you won't have to move them. But radishes are so easy. Just make sure whatever you put them in is six inches or more deep. But that's exciting. And so that's Lindsay, great. I hope you send us pictures of when you have sprouts. Lindsay, I also forgot, and I forgot to tell Christy this. I also winter sowed 
broccoli and cauliflower this week. Oh! And when you said when they have the condensation inside, uh-huh. mine do. I looked oh, at them today, and they do. Oh, that's great. Okay, we have another letter. Okay. Hi, ladies. Oh, this one's only talking to me. <laughs> Are you implying I'm not a lady? Of course not. Here we go. Hi, ladies. I'm really enjoying your podcast. It's really nice to hear your voices as well to get some good gardening tips. I have listened to it here and there because I just can't find the time. Mm. I happened upon the seed starting episode a few days ago after I'd already planned to start my seeds this weekend, but when it referred me to the episode on winter sowing as being lower maintenance, I had to listen to that. My boys are playing, exercising at the park, and I took the opportunity to turn the podcast up loud to listen while I sew. So my questions. I get concerned about toxins that leach from plastic, especially when it's heated. Do you have any thoughts on this? Also, would berry containers work, and is it too late to start? Thanks. Happiness and health to you both. Lisa. Oh, hey, thanks, Lisa. Um, Hmm. Well, I did a little research on this Mm -hmm. about the toxins because I thought that was an excellent question. And here's what I've learned. Well, growing food in plastic seems to be quite safe, provided you use plastic that is stamped as being food safe. To be honest, all plastic leach toxins to some degree. But with gardening in plastic, much of the chemicals leaching from plastic never make it to the roots because of the watering. However, you should be careful you are using food-grade plastic. Mm -hmm. So this is number one, number two, number four, or number five. Mm. So if you are winter sowing in a milk jug, that's a number two plastic. Mm -hmm. Propylene is a number five plastic, and that has the highest heat tolerance and tends to leach less than other plastics. Plus, don't forget when you're winter sowing, they're they're in the ground by the time it gets really hot. No? Uh, you know, it kind of depends because I will, quote unquote, winter sow up until June. Okay. Oh, you're right. You're right. And it depends on where you put it them. It can get really hot. What they, yeah. You know, what they have. Um, and it'll get warm inside of there. But like I said, you know, it'll never make it to the roots. Mm-hmm. So if you're growing food. Yeah. If you're growing flowers, I don't think it matters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And in regards to berry containers, berry containers are a number one plastic. So that fits underneath. You need a one, two, four, five. And no, it's not too late to start. Like you just heard me say, I I quote unquote winter sow. I sow seeds outdoors up until about June. I sow perennials in February, March. I do veggies in March and April. And I do annuals in April, May. Mm -hmm. um, So, uh, and I think we'll put some... um, websites at the bottom of this that kind of shows my research. But I looked at a website called um, gardenmyths.com and concordiagreenhouse.com for information about growing in plastic. Mm -hmm. Which is true for containers, too. A lot of people have plastic containers, right? Not only that, everything comes in plastic. You can't buy, you know, sour cream or yogurt hardly at all. Every single thing comes in plastic. So I figure it can't be leaching too badly. Yeah, you have to make sure that if when you winter sow, that you uh, make sure that the plastic is food grade plastic. Yes, and one, so, two, four, or five. Yeah. Correct. One, and if, two, so, therefore, if if you're recycling a container that had food in it, yeah, you're probably okay. Oh, that's a really good point. You're a genius. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think of that because I was being frizzable. Up. <laughs> and and for everybody else there, you know, if you want to learn more about winter sewing, that's episode 25. Take out your jugs and learn how to winter sew. Uh-huh. It's a great episode, you guys. Uh, and uh, if you have other questions about gardening, about winter sewing, your successes, your flops, uh, you want to learn more about spring cleanup, you want to tell us stories about things you found in the ground while you were gardening, we want to hear from you. Yes, we do. We love it. We we love to hear from you. You could write to us, for example, at Upside Down Tulips at Gmail, or go to our website at Upside Down Tulips dot com, or click on the link. <laughs> in the, in the, in the show notes. Oh, you're so cute. And now it's time for your garden inspiration of the week. 
coming from perhaps an unlikely source, but a person that everybody knows. I'll say the quote first. I have nature and art and poetry, and if that is not enough, what is enough? Vincent Van Gogh. Oh, yes. <laughs> wow. And I just, can I just add that if you have never seen his work in person, it literally gave me chills. I thought yes. I liked him, and then I saw his painting in person, and I got chills. There's so much movement. It's like watching a movie. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. So, yes, nature and art and poetry. Oh, Thank that's you, wonderful. Vincent. And thanks, everybody, for listening to Upside Down Tulips this week. We really appreciate you wherever you are, however you listen. We really, we really love it. We are Edith Weiss and Christy Montour Larson. Hey, I just want to point out, I said your name first there. Y- you did. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you are so sensitive and empathetic. Hey, if you got some laughs and some value out of Upside Down Tulips this episode, could you do us a favor? Please go to your phone, click on the share button, and share the show on social or with a friend who also might appreciate this podcast. Absolutely. Hey, special thanks to Denise Gentilini for composing and performing the Upside Down Tulips theme song. With our special Irish theme this week. Uh Uh-huh. If you'd like to hear more of Denise's music, go to denisegentilini.com or you can find that link on our website. And another special thanks to our extremely talented and very kind friends, Maggie Roswell, Hal Rail, and Billy McBride. Join us next week for tips and tricks on spring planting. Now don't forget, if you make a mistake, your garden will forgive you. Yeah, it will. Because a garden's like Minnesota nice people. Well, they're like Christy, aren't they? Uh, so, like frizzable? <laughs> <laughs> Upside down to lips. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm feeling go home frizzable. Look, I'm going to go home and look that up. <laughs> I feel like I'm frizzable. Oh. <laughs>